Here we go. Much better. What's up, everyone? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Let me know how the audio sounding. Let me know how the video is looking. I think it might be a little overexposed, but it should be good. We got Portugal in the house. We got Egypt. Hello, hello, what's up? So I hope everyone's doing well. And if you've been following along, this is gonna be me editing your photos with the Natural Fields preset pack. Um, that is the presets that I personally use on all of my photos. And we're gonna use them on your photos and see how they look. Also, too, if the audio is sounding good, let me know. Let me know if the music is too loud, because sometimes, you know, I like to get in there and party. <laughs> and while we're starting out as well, let me, let me get y'all some links. So to start out, here's the Natural Fills preset which if you want to, you can pick it up, you can buy it. But I would say wait till the end of the stream at least because I'm also gonna do a giveaway of the Natural Fields preset to three folks in the stream now, which let me give you a link to that. I think this is it here. We got South Africa in the house, what's up? So yeah, check out that link there. Y'all can grab a spot for the giveaway of the Natural Fills preset pack, which after I'm done editing all these photos, we'll go ahead and do that giveaway. And then I will email you all some links and you'll get the Natural Fills preset pack for free. So let your friends know, let someone know that I'm doing a giveaway of the preset pack if there's anyone who's been looking into it or interested in it. Michael Evans in the house, what's up? Welcome to the stream. My little chat box isn't working, but I guess that's just life. I guess that's life. <laughs> what's up everyone, how you doing, how you doing? So we have a pretty good turnout. I'm about to start editing these pretty soon, but the main thing I really want to show out too is that just like it's easy to use this preset pack. It's not hard at all. It works on basically any camera. Because I know a lot of people see it and they're like, oh, well, it's for Fuji. It's like a preset pack for Fuji, but it works on anything. I have second photographers who don't use Fuji and I use my preset pack on their stuff as well. So it gets the same look. Hungry in the house, Kenya in the house. We in there, what's up everybody? All right. Cool, we got people signing up already for the giveaway, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and jump in here and I'll bring up the, the giveaway and stuff later as well. So this first photo, it looks like it's from Bev Thomas and I'm gonna leave this live stream up on the YouTube channel too. So you can come back, you can look at the photos, you can look at your photos and how they were edited and everything. So let's see what we got here. This was shot with unknown. There is no metadata and it's also a JPEG. So let's see how natural feels handles a JPEG. Typically I don't suggest using JPEGs, but it should work fairly well. So we'll see, we'll see how this looks. Cause yeah, we just, we just don't have as much range of control. And that's the thing that's always hard for me with working with JPEGs. Also too, if y'all have any comments, tips, questions or anything, throw them in the chat while we go through this. It's a bit of vignetting here, but there's no metadata, so we can't add any corrections. 
yeah i guess that's it for this one because it's a jpeg so here's our before and after natural fills on the right you can see how i do my greens they're a little bit kind of it they're like bright but they're also kind of dimmed down than a normal green i like this kind of cool looking kind of green here i'm a huge fan so yeah this is the jpeg natural fills on a jpeg I think these next couple of photos are from Chico, and I cannot say that last name. I am so sorry. <laughs> and keep in mind, I butcher names all the time. I'm the worst with any kind of name if it's not like an easy name, so I'm very, very sorry. But I'm pretty sure all these photos up till this one here is, yep, that's all of theirs. So let's go ahead and hit these. It looks like these were shot with a Nikon D750. Christina in the house from Houston. What's up? Uh, I'm going to straighten this one up a little bit. And then yet again, when you throw the preset on, it's typically pretty dark at first. So blow up this exposure just a bit I'm gonna come up on the shadows just a tiny bit lens correction will be auto for the d750 and the white balance is looking pretty good to me if anything maybe a little bit warmer I'm gonna pull back these oranges just a tad I think I'm also gonna suck the yellow out of it. Yeah, so I'll do that a lot of times if I don't feel like the yellow's adding to the scene. I'll just suck the yellow out of it. Now you see, this is too much, I think. Cause the yellow is kind of in the leaves a little bit, but I don't like it too much, so. Also, typically, I'm going to white balance based on skin tones. So if your skin tones start looking weird, that's when I am not happy with the white balance. So here's this first photo, Nikon D750. It's a before and after. And if we wanted to make it a little bit moodier, we could like pull the shadows back some. Kind of like that. Yeah, I actually kind of like that. Have those shadows down a bit. Good stuff. Let's go to their second photo. What was this taken with? Also a Nikon D750. Mm. Hey, this one's gonna look good in black and white. So here it already looks like white balance is about to be a party. ISO is 650, so that's not so bad. But I am going to add some, yeah, and it's generally in their luminance already with that noise reduction. So let's see if auto will help us out. And that's pretty decent. Yeah, this, in my opinion, is going to look way better in black and white. Just because especially like everything's kind of dimmed out because of this flash or light, whatever this is back here. Everything's very like hazy and obviously like I could dehaze, but I like, hate the way I absolutely hate the way dehazing looks. It just it only if you need it in a photo, I'm, I'm generally not going to touch dehaze. 
Oh, yeah. Also, I couldn't even tell that the room was empty. I guess this was a room shot. Um, so, in my personal opinion, this will be better in black and white. I just feel like it it's better for the photo. This is definitely a black and white photo. Maybe crop it in a little bit. Yeah. I like that much better in black and white. So here we are, Nikon D750 again, black and white, natural fields preset. Let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and not go too fast, but yet again, that's half the point of the natural fields preset pack. Is it's especially great if you want to be able to quickly edit things. Yet again, I'm a wedding photographer. I'm going through thousands of photos. I can't sit here and like nitpick photos. I need to be able to come in and just boom, 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 and like edit the stuff. So here, this shot is in the same place, but now we're working with an 85 mil, which that last one looked like a 35 or a 28, yeah. So very different shot, but the white balance is also still looking kind of the same. So we're gonna throw that color on there. And this, this will work in black and white as well, but I think this will be a little bit easier in color because we're not getting all that dehazing as bad as that last one. We'll see if auto white balance gives us a good starting place, which it does. Yep, and then just pull the shadows up a bit to keep them lit since everything else, I don't wanna just pull the whole exposure up. I'm actually, I'm gonna crop in. I wonder if this was like a spray bottle or something. It looks pretty cool. Maybe it was just dust. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> and then pull back the oranges again. <laughs> Man's is looking like he regret his decisions. <laughs> That's horrible, man. <laughs> I was like, what have I done? What have I done? Oh yeah, this is good too. So let's compare that before and after. A big portion of this was white balance and that's usually what happens. The white balance is really what's gonna make the difference. And so typically, yet again, what I'm doing with white balance is looking at my skin tones. And I'm also, I'm super sensitive to like the whole green magenta. Um, so this was super magenta here. You can see straight out of the camera. So I pulled back my magenta a bit. Um, I tend to lean towards magenta. I like having more magenta in photos, but it was too much here. So I think this is a good spot. The only thing I would have personally liked to see more in this photo particularly is just not so much headroom in the photo and be closer up to get all this like sparkly whatever that would have been kind of cool. Um, but I'm not here to really critique photos more so just kind of editing them. <laughs> it looks like the coronavirus that's horrible. <laughs> no. no, no jokes about that for now. Um. Let me post this in here again for anyone who missed it. Don't forget about the giveaway of the Natural Fields preset pack, which is what you see me editing with here right now. I'll be doing that at the end of the stream. There's gonna be three, 
three whole winners. All right, so we did three photos so far. Let's keep going. This one is also from Chico. And this is still the D750. So I've actually, I edited this photo in the past while I was just like messing around with stuff. This photo is a great example of the Natural Fills preset pack because basically it's lit well, it's composed nice, everything looks good. So typically what will happen with the Natural Fills preset pack is it's just gonna go bloom and it's, it's gonna look good. And, that, and that's it. Like there's not much more I would change. If anything, maybe like bring the exposure up a tad and drop the shadows or something. And I could always, I could try to save the sky a little bit more. It's not blown out, but obviously like if I push my exposure up, then I'm losing the clouds. I own your preset pack already, it's awesome. Thank you, thank you. Love your work and videos, thank you guys. So yeah, here's the before and after. I didn't even do anything to this. I literally put the preset on it and turned up the exposure the tiniest bit, but this was already lit very well. I mean, I guess I could put like a, um, what's that, a graduated filter or whatever. So we can do, we can do exposure and then just, save those clouds a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect straight. Yeah, the, the picture out of, straight out of camera looked great. And that's really the goal with the Natural Fills preset pack. You wanna be getting great straight out of camera photos first, and then the Natural Fills will just kind of fill it in a little bit. You see the greens a little a little different there, a little dim down. Um, the colors do like, it does fade out a little bit because the saturation is pulled down. But I mean, the colors are pretty much on for the most part. I mean, you know, we could be picky and, you know, help her out here a little bit. Um, but I'm not trying to go in and do all that stuff right now. Vietnam, what's up? We got Vietnam in the house. And the brown leaf is extracting. You're talking about this one right here. Let's hit this last photo, which I do love. I love a nice symmetrical straight shot like this, which we can either level it or we can hit auto and see how, yeah, it pulls it. So this is the last photo from Chico. I loved all these submissions, great stuff. These locations are amazing. I'm struggling making small town. Yeah, small town Texas can be hard because I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the land is very flat for the most part there. So it's, it's hard to work with. Here we go. So through the preset on that, this one may work better black and white as well. Um, I think I may do a version of each. And these reds are hitting kind of hard. So I'm gonna pull the orange back a bit. Yeah. Turn up the clarity to make that brick wall pop off a little bit. Yeah. And sit somewhere in there. So here is this photo. Um, but I think this will work better as a black and white. Does your preset have sharpening and masking amount? So it does have some sharpening in there on it already, but a lot of times I'll turn it down. So when I'm working on my own personal stuff, I use exposure four for my exports. And that way I do all of my sharpening in exposure. But when you're using the preset itself, I think the sharpening's up in like the nineties or so. If you're using Fuji, you wanna turn the detail down because you're gonna get worms if you don't and turn the masking like pretty high up. But this is around what I would do if I was gonna sharpen right inside a Lightroom. 
is like pretty heavy on the sharpening. The radius around 1.2 and then the detail low or off yet again because of Fuji stuff and then masking pretty high. Cause yeah, the masking is gonna help those lines. Like I tend to turn masking almost nearly all the way up because I want the lines to be sharp. I don't want anything else to be sharp. Can you use the same preset in Camera Raw? Uh, I am not sure actually, I've never used Camera Raw. God, my beard, y'all. Yo, how do I, how can I turn off my notifications right now? Is there a way for me to like, put on do not disturb mode or something? In Windows? I don't want y'all to have to hear that Windows <laughs> alert like every five seconds. Let's see if we can figure this out. Oh, here we go, focus assist. Alarms only, there we go. We have a lot of different lands. It goes from flat to a lot of pine trees to swamp. It's a lot of closed off. I mean, that, that sounds kind of cool to me. I feel like you can make that work. In Texas but yet again I have to be there but I personally I know what you're talking about because moving from New York to North Carolina was like I'd be hurting sometimes here look let's make a virtual copy and we'll do a black and white version we'll pull back these highlights Yeah, so this would be the black and white version. I'm cropping on it a little bit. I don't want those whites to be too, too, too bright and shiny. Awesome, so that was Chico's submissions. That's some good stuff. They were all his photos here, all the edited versions. Do a couple black and whites in there. But yeah, this this one here is so good. This is this is so so good. How did you get the masking to show for sharpening? So for the the sharpening stuff that I just showed, when you're in there and you're editing if you hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. And that can go for sharpening or any of those options. So you hold Alt while you're moving it and it'll give you like a different view for you to see it easier. So I can like zoom in here and then like really kind of see the sharpening. Same with Radius. So see radius is also just kind of how thick the lines are gonna be as you sharpen them. Details the same kind of way, like the little parts on the inside and then masking again. All the black is the sections that are not gonna get sharpened. So I was just holding alt on all of those. So let's see, who do we got next? Oh, hey, it's Christina. Christina Cooper in the house. She's actually in the stream, I think. I thought I, thought I saw her. So. Were you in here? Yeah, she's in here. All right. So we got a couple photos from her. This is with the Canon 80D. So throw that natural fills on there. And so for me, this is very green. So we're going to want to look at the magenta bump that up some and yet again i don't know how well y'all can see it but skin tones are what give away a lot of your white balance like he just looks green and it makes sense like you're around all of this green it's just everywhere so that magenta has to come up until he looks like a healthy normal human <laughs> you probably warm it up a little bit too um i tend to like my 
photos to be cooler than warm. To get Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro for Mac, do I have to pay a monthly fee or can I get it for free? You do have to pay a monthly fee. Um, all of the Adobe stuff is monthly or annual. Um, the only other things I would do to this photo, maybe crop it a little bit and this one little hair, I don't know, it annoys me because it looks like there's something in his hair. So I would just clone that out. And there was another spot in the leaves. It just looks like something floating, like a piece of dust or something. Um, and obviously I could go in and nitpick everything. But like I said, I'm not gonna go in and do that. So here's this first photo. Here's your before and after. Yeah, you see how yellowy this is? You can yet again, even like I was talking about, I can um, suck the yellows out of it. Because yellow tends to be that color for some weird reason. Like, it just, it doesn't show up a lot. Like, it's in there, but a lot of photos or a lot of the colors maybe combine yellow a little bit, but it's not really heavy. So you suck the yellow out some and you can help your white balance a little bit that way. Taken at a very simple wonky park. <laughs> Do you think Lightroom runs a little more smooth on Mac OS than it does Windows? Um, it's hard to say, so I'm on a Windows machine right now and I also, have a Hackintosh, so I guess that's hard to judge, but um, it's hard to say. It's been a while since I've used the Mac OS with Lightroom, so I'd have to go back and try it. The greens and whites look amazing, thank you. Yeah, and yet again, you saw I didn't really do much to it, I just applied the preset, and that's about it. Let's go to her next photo. And this is also with the Canon EOS 80D. Yeah, they're a gorgeous couple. So let's go ahead and apply that preset and you can already, so that's the change right there. The greens are gonna be a big difference. Plop that on there, make sure the camera settings are correct. Now for this, because it's backlit, you don't wanna just up the exposure like this. You can, but obviously the background is gonna get super blown out. Also yet again, this is very green, so let's bump this magenta a little bit. Uh, it looks like it can be warmed up some. Probably in here somewhere. Like I said, I like my photos cooler. So what I would do, oops, I got a call and I missed it is I would do a brush adjustment of shadow save. Yo, who is this calling me? And so this is shadow save plus and it's probably gonna be too much, but I like to go heavy on it one off so I can see it and then I can adjust from there. So I can be like, yeah, this is way too much and then adjust it from there. One click and done, just about, just about. I wished it was like fully one click, but it really comes down to like, make sure you're getting the stuff looking really good in camera. And then yeah, it's it's nearly one click. One click and then exposure. And y'all, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, Christina, don't forget about brush adjustments. Cause the way to think about it, especially if you're a natural light photographer and that's what you mainly use, don't forget when you're shooting raw, that range and um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? The range you have in your dynamic range goes for the whole picture. Cause I think for some reason, and I know I used to do it a lot. For some reason you don't think like, you think dynamic range and you're thinking like the whole photo 
but you forget like that dynamic range is everywhere on the photo so you can brush it in in one place and then be like oh yeah i can change them like i have this dynamic range on just them so basically you can use it kind of like a reflector um obviously it's not going to look like a reflector and you know if you want to get the best results use reflectors and things like that but it helps so like that was too much but what i can do now is pull the shadows back on the whole photo and pull the exposure down because remember their shadows have been lifted higher than the rest of the photo so now i can adjust the shadows knowing that they're already they're brighter in the shadows if that makes sense rather than just blowing out the background Like I could even come back into the brush adjustment again. You click this little dot here to bring it up and then, you know, adjust it a little bit more. Sometimes, and you, you really have to make minimal adjustments because if you make too many, it's gonna be obvious, but you know, come up on the exposure just a tiny bit, stuff like that, like you can do that. So if I come up on the exposure on them and then I can pull the exposure back on everything else and it looks like they're lit. And so that's like a big, big, like brush adjustments, all, especially if you're a natural light photographer. Like anytime, and so I personally don't like to backlight stuff, but whenever I'm in a situation where stuff is a little bit back lit, that's how I save the shadows on them. And just don't, don't be too drastic with it because it'll be pretty obvious if you're like very, very like, oh, look, I brightened them up. You want it to look natural. So just like they're not so heavily shadowed. So here's our before and after. Um, and I can, I'm still trying to adjust and find like where I like it so that it looks yet again natural. And so yeah, they're backlit here so they have the shadows on them. And then here's the finished version where I did the actual changes on them can your preset be used on lightroom for ipad without subscription no you do have to pay for it hold hold on y'all who is this calling me yeah hold on guys i guess it's important because it's the same person called me three times Give me two seconds. Man, how's someone gonna call me three times in a row? And I call them back and it gets Roy's mail. Oh, and here they are now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was, but they keep calling me. Okay, sorry, y'all. 
Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Could you maybe make a suit darker in the adjustments? You can. So yet again, um, since I adjusted them as a whole. Uh oh, hold up, y'all. Here we go. So since I adjusted them as one whole, if I wanted to, I could come back and if you click on new, now I can make another adjustment and then I could paint on just him and do whatever I want to. I don't tend to do, cause that's when it starts getting like too much. It's just like way too much and you're just trying to change everything. But yes, you can. Um, also, yeah, with um, the iPad, you do have to pay for iPad or I'm sorry, Lightroom Mobile to be able to use presets on it. Do, 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 do. How's everyone doing today? Michael up in here being a sweet, sweet guy. <laughs> Y'all, for everyone new, don't forget about the Natural Fields preset giveaway, which I am doing in the stream. Yeah, spammed with health insurance. Yeah, this was, the call was coming from where my grandma lives and she's not really doing so well right now. So I didn't know if it was like important. And you know, when someone calls you like, back to back and then you're like okay did somebody die and, you know i'm not even trying to just be morbid like really did somebody die um but i don't know what that was i don't know if it was just like mistake calls or something they keep calling me though i answered i didn't hear anything so i don't know i don't know what the deal is um here goes some more from christina we got two more um so i was playing around with this photo before the stream and I think personally, I like it in black and white the best. Um, so we're gonna do black and white. Now this is one of those situations where like, obviously this is a hard situation, especially for white balance. Cause you're just in like, it's almost like not a hotel room, but um, you know how some parks have like municipal buildings and stuff. And sometimes people get married. There. It's, it's something like that or like those really weird wonky rooms and churches that are like in the back. That's, this is what this reminds me of. So you got like the really bad lighting and stuff. Um, and obviously there's not much you could have done about that. Um, if anything, you could have used a flash to help a little bit, but there's still only but so much. So I hit it off with all the white balance, which helps it a little bit. And I'm gonna go in here and just do a little bit of spot removing. There's not much, and I don't like to do too much spot removing because I don't want it to seem like I have issues with someone's face type of thing. What is that? So if something stands out enough, I'll do it, but I always think the worst when I call, I'm call i called over and over. I, that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't want to do a BRB during the stream, but it was like, uh, like really, did did someone die? Did I did I miss it? Pull this contrast back a little bit. So yeah, personally, I think this photo works the best in black and white. But let's let's see what it looks like in color. There goes that magenta again. Um, so on black and brown skin the thing that's gonna be the culprit of your white balance and skin tones looking weird is orange. So if their skin ever looks like too weirdly orange, but you need like a warmer scene, pull back the oranges in the HSL thing. Cause you can like kinda even out the skin tone that way. But yeah, this is, this is one of those spots where it, it just, it's gonna look Bad, you can only make it look but so good. <laughs> Nailed the location, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've dealt with so many of these where you're just like, ugh. And it's like, this is where the bride gets ready. And you're like, no, 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 no. So a tip for that, Christina, if you do have a spot where they're like, this is where the bride gets ready. So first off, you should have already established a really good rapport with your couple to the point where you could have told the bride like, yeah, this room sucks. And if you want good photos, we need to go over here and take your photos, literally outside or in a different room or something. Now I know that's hard and it can be hard because sometimes the brides are like, oh, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want anyone to see me and all that kind of stuff. But really make sure you have your rapport down with them well first 
and try your best to really be like, look, I want to get you dope photos and it's not going to happen in this room. Um, so here's the before and after. Natural fills on the right. The exposure is a little hot for me. But you know, like that works. I'm okay with this. The police shadows up, yeah. And it's a cute photo. She's like reacting to something or someone seeing her in her dress or whatever. Um, black and white might look better. And the reason I think this would be a black and white is just because of it's like a very documentary kind of, you know, you can't see this person, but you know something's happening here. Um, so that's why I would pick black and white. Uh, I wonder if I have any examples of when I made the bride go somewhere different. I don't know if I have any offhand that I can think of. Because I have so many weddings. This is 2018. Um, oh, you know what? This might be a good example. I originally edited in black and white as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Aside from the white balance being a whole ordeal, it just looks like a... a black and white photo yeah so for this wedding i think they had hotel rooms but the hotel rooms were really small so there was a kind of common area at this it was like a bed and breakfast hotel ish kind of thing so there was a common area that we could kind of use so i took her in there so these are like fake makeup shots she pretty much already had her makeup done and you can kind of tell it's a common area. We just kind of opened up some area for her to, you know, get some makeup retouched and things like that. So that kind of stuff helps if you can find an area. But, like, I really didn't have a lot of space to work with. Your tones look great. Such a small location. Yeah. Abundant about it. Yeah. That's, all, that's always what happens. And, I mean, the worst case scenario, you do what you have to do and just shoot it where it is. But that's my that's always my first thing is be like okay can i take you somewhere else um so this shot is great the only thing that scares me is the fact that you were at 80th second of a shutter speed um obviously they weren't really moving but that's low shutter <laughs> super low shutter but this is yet again christina this is her eos t6 Throw the natural preset on there. We're at ISO 100, so we should have, yeah, we should have range for days. Here goes another, let's pull the shadows up. So in this case, I'm not gonna do the, um, the adjustment brush, only because there's nothing else in the scene that the shadows are affecting. Now, and the other thing, basically, the reason why I wouldn't want to do the shadows the whole time is because it's going to pull the shadows out of stuff behind them and you could see it. Whereas this one, there's not much of anything happening. <laughs> yeah, living on the edge. <laughs> I mean, really though. Like, really. <laughs> I'm going to shoot at 1 40th of a second. Living life on the edge. Why are my shadows so high? Because I put them near her. Let's do auto white balance and that didn't do what I wanted it to. So obviously we want to warm this up. But yet again, like I said, you don't want to warm it too much because then black skin's going to start looking weird, which it's starting to do it now. So yet again, come down to your HSL, find saturation, pull that orange down just a little bit. Don't suck the life out of them so that they look like zombies, but pull it back a little bit so they don't like look like they're glowing too much. And then adjust that between your white balance. So basically, if they're starting to look like zombies, then bring the orange back up. If they're starting to look too orange, bring the orange back down some, or white balance. By the way, I was seven months pregnant when I shot these. I may have had pregnancy brain. <laughs> yeah. Pregnancy brain is real. Also, props on the seven months out here doing these weddings. Yeah, this is good, this looks great. Here's the before and after. And this was pretty much just lifting the shadows, lifting the exposure, natural feels preset. A little bit of white balance. 
Yeah, that's great stuff. This is great stuff, Christina. I think you're doing pretty well at taking like lame, wonky Texas areas, as you call them, <laughs> and working them out. So those were Christina's photos here. Let's take a quick look at them again. Really good lighting, good work overall. This photo was probably the hardest one for her, but I mean, this is what people deal with. <laughs> you know, like, and I, I feel like more than not, those are the kind of weddings you're getting. Where it's just like, here you are in a room. Or you know what's even worse? I hate when you go to the venue and it's like a beautiful venue. And then the, um, the like the suites for the groom and the bride are like dungeons. There's no windows, it's just brick, they're dark. There's no light in them. And you're like, word y'all? Really? So this is where the everyone gets ready and you're like, bro, there's what? How? It's gonna be beautiful photos. No, there's no light. Thanks for the critique and tips. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help out. Let's keep going. I did this one on stream one time. So this is Francis. Um, let's do this one again. I love this dress. I don't know if that's like a traditional dress in whatever culture, but it looks really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and change the crop here. Cause y'all y'all already know me. I love that center crop. Throw that preset on it. And this is a raft file, so this is good old Fuji. He's shooting with an XT3, so this is my my safe spot. Like this, I know this already. This song is annoying me. I can't take it, y'all. Scoop. All right. So I don't want to come too high on the exposure, so I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit. Warm it up a tad. And throw some magenta in there. Not too much, though. Actually, I'm going to pull the magenta back because the green is kind of the point of this photo. Christopher Davis, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. What's your take on the X100V? I don't know enough about it, actually. Um, it looks cool, though. It's like a mini X-T3 nearly. Uh-oh, what'd you do, Lightroom? Let's get this rotate straight. There you go, that's better. So here's this shot by Francis on the X-T3 with the 85, I think that's a Viltrox 85 or something he said. Cause he was in the stream one time when I actually edited. Let's see what we got next. This is also a JPEG, so we'll see how this works. It looks exactly how you edited it on the last stream. <laughs> yeah, the consistency is a, it's a big thing to be able to be consistent. Um, let's see if there's metadata on this at least. This is a Nikon Coolpix L4840. So this will be a great test. Cause I've actually never used the natural fills preset on like just a typical point and shoot camera. So here we go. JPEG point and shoot blam. And it's auto for this. There's no lens corrections cause it's the JPEG. This thing is way too blue. So let's actually just auto. Oh no. Oh no, baby. What is you doing? <laughs> it's way too blue and it's way too green. So. Throw a bit of magenta in there and warm that thing up as much as we can, cause yeah, it's it's JPEG. Let's bring those shadows down and exposure up a bit. I always have the hardest time editing JPEGs, cause I like barely ever do it. So when I do, I'm like. Ugh! <gasps> um, the saturation I think is too low. So I bumped the saturation back up just a little bit. So here we go, JPEG versus JPEG. So that's natural fills on the right. Actually, hey, that don't look too bad. I 
but a lot of that is mainly um white balance honestly it was a little too blue here like it looked fine but it has a little bit more contrast in it and also because it's a jpeg like i'll probably you know push a little contrast on it pull the shadows up a tad i don't know yeah it's not bad not bad for a jpeg thank you gavin for that submission here is Infinity Media, which I think I think this is the only photo they submitted. This is what ARW Sony, yes yeah, Sony. I don't know what model that is. Anyone know what the ILCE Seven M Three is? Anyone have any Anyone have any ideas about that? Because I I don't know what that is. <laughs> Anyways, it's Sony. Let's jump in here. Put that natural feels color on it. Pull them shadows up a tad. Give me some exposure to green. So we need a little bit of magenta and a tiny bit of warmth. And then here's a great example. There's a lot of white in this photo. So I'm gonna suck the yellows out of it. Cause yellow tends to be the color that's not really used much. I don't know what it is about yellow. Yellow tends to just muddy up photos. It's like mad annoying. Like I've had times where I just pull yellow totally out of a photo and it makes no difference whatsoever. A73, thank you much. So I feel like the saturation is a little too low, so I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit. I do tend to have the saturation pretty low on the photos. There we go, so this is our before and after. And like I said again, with black skin, how orange the skin is, is what's gonna really tell if the white balance is bad or if it's bad for like darker skin tones. You don't want it to be too orange because then we're gonna be all glowy and stuff. Um, but you don't want it to be too, too like dead down brown because then it'll look like there's no life in the skin. Black and white would also be really good. Yeah, this does look like a good black and white, especially just because there's so much black and white contrast going on. Who is this? Oh, the Lucas shot. Yeah, this looks good. I like this a lot. Let's make a black and white version of it. Create virtual copy. Here's our virtual copy. Just throw that black and white on there. We'll pull the highlights down just a little bit. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it right there. Yeah. Let's compare these two next to each other. So there's the color in the black and white. All right, moving on. We have some photos from Jerry Walker. He actually hit me up and was concerned that he felt like the preset wouldn't work well on off-camera flash photos, so he submitted a couple. So let's go ahead and edit those. Oh, Lucas's photos are coming up next. Yeah, Lucas's photos, bruh. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta stay and wait for Lucas's photos. These things, man. Um, but yeah, so here's a couple shots from him off camera flash and then one without. So let's take a look. He is shooting with also the A7, I see 7RM3, okay. So A7 III, good old Sony times. So here's a, a groomsman shot or grooms people. Throw that Fuji on there. Or not Fuji, I just name it that. Natural Fills preset. Oh, and 
and we need to set it to Sony. And it feels like the oranges, yeah, there's too much orange or something. I sometimes have a problem with Caucasian skin looking blue, purple, especially if the clouds outside using natural light. I have the warmth of the look, yeah. <laughs> so it's look like they're dying. And you're like, yeah, okay. Okay, hey, wait, I do need the yellow in this shot. There's something in the colors that's like throwing me off here. But it's definitely not the magenta because if there's too much magenta, it looks wonk. Yeah, I think this is the first one. I think this is the edit right here. Yeah. So I think that looks fine on off camera flash. Um, Y'all let me know what you think. Like I said, I feel like there's something missing in the white balance. Like I want it to be more warm, but I don't want their skin to look all weird. It feels like it's too cool, but not at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Taylor said it's super cool, but like when I turn up the warmth, it like, it gets weird. You know what it is? It's probably the off camera flash. Like I wonder if I, so look, if I came in here and warmed up the whole scene, right? So that to me, they look horrible. But the rest of the scene looks better. I wonder if I came in and did a brush adjustment and we'll do like, what is it called? Cooler Plus? About to be cool. So we'll just come in here and paint coolness on them. Cause unless the off camera flash had gels in it, then they're gonna be white balanced a little bit differently. And yeah, I played around with the HSL already. Like I dropped it down a bit. I don't want to drop it any further though. I feel like it's going to start looking wonk city. So yeah, just come in here and paint, paint on them. Camera calibration for the blues. Maybe. I think this is, this is getting what I want, I think. But obviously you can't you can't do this on every photo, come in and paint in coolness. This is definitely giving me what I want though. And yet again, it doesn't need to be perfect. There we go. Now they're cooled down and the whole scene is still warm. And that is definitely feeling better. Um, camera calibration for the blues. Oh goodness, I ain't about to do this. Yeah, no, this is actually feeling pretty good to me right now. And then we can brush adjust and deal with them. There we go. That feels much better.
what say you? What say you, live streamers? Also, while we're at it, let me post that link again. Don't forget about the Natural Fills preset giveaway. At the end of the stream, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it away. Y'all can see y'all can see the whole my whole screen set up here. <laughs> I'm realizing I have never dropped below the line on the brush. <laughs> yeah, the brushes are the brush is where it's at. Have you created a Patreon yet? I have. There's not much going on on it right now. But I wanna I'm doing more videos specifically for Patreon and I'm breaking down a lot of some of my other videos. So like the full wedding days, you're gonna see you're gonna see like little tiny bits. Kinda how I was talking about earlier about either using the brush and how to do that and or or dealing with like the wonky room at a church and stuff like like there's a lot of little things like that that go along with videos I already put out on YouTube. Here's another one by Jerry Walker. Same wedding. Let's go ahead and hit this. This is also off camera flash. So this is good all good old Sony. And I'm gonna pull back the yellows a bit. And I think the orange. I wonder if I could pull back the orange and then warm up the whole. No. They're starting to look like zombies again. So I think this photo has the same situation going on as the other one. Like, I feel like I want the rest of the scene warmer with them not as warm. So let's try to throw on that cooler plus on there. When I have a too warm of a photo, I'll add a complimentary color in the ship that shows like a blue cyan and a split tone. You know, I never use split toning. I just like don't ever use it. I'm thinking about making some more presets in the future if I can like land something that looks decent. So natural feels applied to X Pro 3 really okay. I bought it last month but haven't used it for my camera. Um, I have not used it on an X Pro photo yet, but I'm assuming it's gonna be fine. Um, especially because I'm a Fuji shooter mainly, so Fuji cameras are always a plus with the natural feels preset. But especially the main point of this stream is to show you that it works on any type of camera. Yeah, I think. Yeah. The whole scene needs to be warmer and they need to be cooler. Yeah, this works for me. Uh-oh, am I getting some buffering? No, I'm in there still. Oh no, don't let my internet give out on me. We were doing so well for so long. My internet is the worst. Oh, hey, it's Jerry Walker. I didn't know he was in there. What's up, Jerry? So since you're in here, how are you feeling about these edits? I'm having a hard time with the white balance, honestly. Quarantine time preset, discount, maybe. Maybe we'll throw that in there for y'all. Yeah, I want them to be cooler. Yeah, that's that's what I'm missing. The whole scene to be warm and them to be cooler. That's what's really getting me. There we go. Yo, my internet is the worst. 
Are y'all still getting me? I think I'm buffering or something. So those were Jerry's fault. Oh, wait. I think this last one is Jerry as well. Yes, it is. This is also the A73, it looks like. So let's go ahead and hit this last one real quick. Can you get rid of... Can you get it for free if you sign up for the Gleam link? Yeah, I'm doing a giveaway. So three people are going to get it for free. So here's the natural fills preset on there. Let's make sure it's set for Sony for the corrections. Pull these shadows up a little bit. Pull that magenta down a tad. And I like how blue it is. I don't think it needs to be much warmer. So this is pretty much where I would leave it. Maybe pull the shadows back down a bit. I can hear you, cool. Still here, awesome. I just came in, I was late. I'm looking on my phone, awesome. Yeah, and Jerry, I'm gonna have this up too. It's gonna be online, so y'all can go back and rewatch it. Um, if I have the time for it, and I'm feeling quite generous, I may even go in and leave timestamps of each person's photos. Um, so, you know, show me some love if you want me to go in and add the timestamps. <laughs> yeah, this is great. This was with a 181, the 70, the 200. Look at that bouquet. Mm. Will I be able to watch this later? I'm working it. Yes, this will be up and online. I will. It'll be up and online forever. So here are Jerry's photos. A couple of off-camera flash ones, and a natural light one. We did a bunch of painting adjustments on these. So this was all natural fills preset. Great stuff, great stuff, y'all. I, I love looking at other people's photos. So here's Lucas, if he's still in the, um, still in the chat. Lucas gave a pretty good amount of photos and you saw here, his photo was the cover photo. I was really feeling Lucas's stuff. This is great stuff. This is one of those, you ever uh, you ever see photos you wish you took and you were like, yeah. <laughs> or like, um, I know for me when I get a second photographer, so we're like shooting the same wedding and they'd say like one or two shots, it's just so good. And you're like, Ugh. ah, I wish I took that. <laughs> so let's hit these photos by Lucas. These are also on an A7 III. Um, so straighten those lines a little bit. I'm a very, I like my lines straight, as straight as they can possibly be. I'm gonna crop in just a tad, center her up a bit. And then we throw this natural fills on there. Bring this exposure up. Shadows up a, a tiny, tiny bit. Make sure we're on a Sony camera for adjustments. Yo, my, my notifications. There we go. And this is probably where I would leave it. That white balance is so good. If anything, maybe some magenta, but no, it's good where it's at. So here's the before and after. Yet again, I just turned up the exposure and adjusted the shadows a little bit. If anything, I could probably pull them down just a tad. Photos you wish you took. Me looking at your photos. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This was with a 50 mil, 51.8 at f2.2. Looking good. So let's keep, let's keep going. Here's another great shot. I love kind of like the like facial emotion here. Got that nice side lighting, so good. So good. Uh, so this one is a little bit more green than I would like, so I'm just gonna hit that magenta just the tiniest bit. Make sure the adjustments for the Sony are on. Uh, maybe warm it up a little bit too, yeah. Their skin is looking a little... Warm it up a little and pull back the oranges just a tad.
Yep, and so here's this photo. And so this is what, if you've bought the Natural Fields preset or used them or have seen me on the live stream, like this, this is the point of the Natural Fields preset. You shouldn't have to do a lot of work. If you're getting it in your camera really well and it looks good in your camera, you can pretty much apply the preset and it kind of gives you a little bit of better tones and color and that's it. And it makes you able to edit very quickly because then what I would typically do is if I had photos in the same scene, like if there were more photos, I actually, I want it warmer, just, just a tiny bit. Um, then I would just copy it and paste it on like the rest of the photos. So yeah, it gives it it gives it like a quick, quick kind of touch up. Here's another photo. Looks like the A7 III again. So that's natural fills on there. Bring that exposure up. Uh, and I think it's good. Yeah, <laughs> there's not. It's so good. I don't think it needs to. Yeah, the white balance looks good. It's so good. Here's the before and after on that. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do my yeah, my adjustments. There we go. So natural feels again on Sony. Yeah, and especially like since I made this preset with mirrorless cameras in mind, like it really it shows it really shows on other mirrorless cameras. Like they're pretty much just like click, boop, there it is, yay. <laughs> Oops. I'm over here like I don't know how to use Lightroom. I love this shot. To me, this is the black and white, but let's do it in color first. Look at that, y'all. That was like that other photo from, uh, I can't remember who it was, but like you don't even have to do anything to it. Like it, it's fine. One click. One click awesomeness. And yet again, you got you got to get it right in camera. You got to get it right. If you get it right in camera, your post should be very easy. Like really, just like bloop, cool. Next photo, next photo, next photo. So good. Who was that? Who subbed me? Thanks, Jimmy, for that sub. Yeah, this is still Lucas. His stuff is really good. Um, let me make. Let's make a virtual copy of this one. So here's our black and white. So I'm gonna bring these highlights down a bit. Make sure we're set to Sony. Shadows just a tad, contrast down just a little bit. So here's the black and white version. Yeah, everyone's photos are amazing. They're really great photos, but his were the ones that definitely stood out and I was like. <laughs> Here's another great shot. Yeah, there's your one click again. If anything, pull the oranges down a little bit in the HSL. Not too much though, because I still want life in, life in them, but there that is again. Nice kind of soft dim down tone. You see the greens change a little bit. The only thing with this photo, not to like photo critique too much, but his hand placement is, <laughs> it looks like he's trying to, you know, trying to get in there and get a, get a good feel um, rather than it being like them embracing. I probably would have had him like, maybe not around the stomach, but like 
this hand here was that his right hand maybe down on her leg on her thigh or something and it had this one up here maybe cupping around her arm there like he's like holding her trying to pull her in or something because this looks like he's trying to grab her her uh her fun bags if you, if you want to call them that <laughs> Here we go again. I love this angle. Bloop. Bring the orange down just a tiny bit. And that's it. So yet again, one click. I don't know, maybe my preset's better for Sony. I feel like I don't even have this much good luck <laughs> on my own photos sometimes. <laughs> he just knows how to do his uh, his white balance. That's what it really is. And then here's the last one from Lucas, which you saw as the cover photo. And this was basically the same thing. I think the last time I edited it, edited it, edited it, <laughs> I just added some magenta. It was a little too green for me. Yeah. Yeah, and there's that photo. And that's the thing too, my, um, the natural fields preset does add a little bit of greeniness to your photos. So just keep that in mind while you're editing. So here's all of Lucas's submissions. All edited with the natural fields preset. So yeah, these turn out really well. And this is a great example of how the natural fills work when you get everything right in camera. All right, let's keep going. Got a handful more and we're almost there. Also too, don't forget about the natural fills preset giveaway. I think it's three, three winners I got going on. This is a JPEG by Marcus Ross. So this one will be, if this was not a JPEG, it would turn out very different because these colors coming out of the camera are really hard. Um, so I don't know how the natural feels is gonna handle this. It may actually not work out too well, but let's see. Oh, also let's see, does it say which camera it is? It does not. Yeah. This one's gonna be hard. Um, definitely needs to warm up. Yep, and magenta is our friend. Pull back the exposure a bit and come up on the shadows. But it was a little bit overexposed, so we can only do what so much. Um, that yellow is hitting kind of hard. So I'm gonna pull that back. And yet again, like I said, you see how like it makes a difference, but I don't know. Yellow always just gets in the way. I don't know what it is about yellow. And I think with this being a JPEG, this is as good as it's gonna get. So there's our before and after. Natural Fields preset on a JPEG. And getting about the same look out of it. The main thing, so with JPEGs, it's gonna be white balance. Like for me to get his skin tone there, that was all white balance. And yet again, when I white balanced this scene, it was based off of the skin tone. But yeah, I like the way the greens look way better, but a lot of this stuff is overexposed. As soon as I saw the lime green, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this green, <laughs> I'm surprised I was able to get this out of it from a JPEG, it's not so bad. Moving on, we got some shots from Michael Evans, which you are, yes, you're in the stream. Raph, which is good old Fuji. Let's see which Fuji we looking at. XT3. 
Some nice indoor shots. Looks like we got the window off to the right. Oh no. The window's behind you and kind of to the right. Is that right, Michael? We got the 23 F1.4, 320 ISO. Blam. Throw that natural feels on there. Work on this exposure. And I like to bring it up until like right around the point of the skin getting overexposed. So like you see the, the brightness here. Once that starts getting too like bright, you've gone too far. So yet again, like for a lot of your edits, like skin tone decides everything. Skin tone is everything. Make sure they're looking alive and fresh and not dead and not overexposed. That's really what it comes down to. Off to the right side, side lighting, yep. Kind of over, over to the side here. Good old side lighting. This looks a little too cool, so we're gonna warm it up some. And maybe throw some magenta in there. Magenta is my friend. Oh, well, maybe not too much though. And the rest of this should already be good. Let's see if we can pull some yellow out. Let's see what happens. Yep, that works for me. There's not a, can't you hold alt and see? No, you can't, okay. So here's the before and after. This is basically the same stuff I'm editing on. Hey Michael, is this um compressed raw or just full, full raw on the X-T3? Let's go ahead and hit this next photo. So see, yet again, this is what I was talking about. So these shots are basically in the same scene. So if it were a wedding and I was editing it like a wedding, I would just highlight your main photo that's highlight the most is your like master photo. And then you just sync your settings. Make sure all the settings that you want are on there and just sync that. And then you should get pretty much the same results, but it's just a little different. So then you'll have to go in and work on this next photo. Compress raw, yeah. I feel like that's the only way to shoot on Fuji. So yeah, this just needs to warm up a little bit more. And we could always, we could come in and use the other photo as reference. Yeah, and that looks good to me. This photo is warmer though. I may go back and re-edit this other one. Good stuff. Good stuff, Michael, I love it. Yeah, that, oh, this is the 56. And that's why the coloring's different. Man, I hate, I hate how different the lighting or the colors look between the Fujis, especially the 56. That's the only thing I hate about the 56. Like, you'll use the 56 comparative to like the 35 or something, and the colors are just so different. It's mad annoying. This is exposed a little hot for me. Let's come back a little bit. I use uncompressed on my X-T3 for a bit and changed the compression. Went for, yeah, <laughs> went from 900 to 1400 photos. That's really how it works though. You're one of the people I was looking at before I bought my Fuji. Oh, awesome. Thank you, sir. So here's Michael, he's in the chat. Here are a couple shots he submitted. Yeah, there's the tiniest bit of difference here. It's like in the warmth or something, but I'm not gonna go through and pick nitpick. The 56 tends to be cooler, I found. Yeah, 56 really is the best lens though. It's so good. Let's keep moving on. Let's see what we have up next. We have Ravi with uh, the Nikon D3100. 
3500s and i think yeah that's his only photo here so let's go ahead and check this out this is also yes raw whoa 128 or 1000 i can't say numbers y'all the iso is high <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired right now. My brain's not working. That's a super high ISO. And you can already see the noise in there. So let's see. Natural feels. Boom. Pull up shadows a tad. Pull up that exposure. Yep. Pull up that magenta. And then let's work with that noise real quick. So I'm just basically gonna come fairly high on the luminance and I like to just bump my detail like as high as I can go. Yeah, and this is Probably as good as it's gonna get. Cause yeah, it's starting to look a little too smooth. Actually, I'm gonna come down. And I mean, I don't mind the noise, but it is fairly noisy, but that's not so bad. I'm gonna crop in just a little bit. I like to keep her the main focus of the photo. 12,800, thank you. Thank you for helping me say what numbers and words again. <laughs> So here's the before and after. Here's natural fills. All I really did was add some magenta, turned up the exposure. It's pretty noisy, but it was a noisy photo in the first place. So, I mean, that's not so bad with the noise reduction, but noise reduction is aside from the preset. Your preset's really just adding um, like tones and things. This is not really made to be a high ISO preset. But it doesn't look so bad. Especially, let's see, let's let's sharpen it a bit. I mean, yeah, after being sharpened and noise reduced a bit I mean if you're not pixel peeping it's not so bad you can't totally know it it is a little too smooth for me though that's the only thing that's bothering me like you can tell it's it's kind of smooth do you have a limit on your ISO yeah I I hate getting anywhere close to 2000 when I start getting to 2000 I don't like it and I'll do it and it'll be fine most of the time but I just don't I'd rather get to a point and then deal with what I need to do to get the lighting right, rather than just like blasting my ISO as far as it can go. Cause yet again, my my main mentality to everything is I don't wanna deal with too much in post. Um, you need to get it right in the first place. And that's like, you look at the movie industry and they're like starting to find that out the hard way. Cause you know, they did all this CG stuff in the 2000s and like all those movies for the most part do not age well at all. And then you have anything that's used practical effects and that works better, mainly because yet again, you don't have to do it in post. If you use practical stuff on set, it's gonna look good because it's real. Um, so the same thing, like get it right in camera and then when you get to post, it's not so bad. Um, so while yes, I can noise cancel this a bit, it's only gonna look but so good because it's just a noisy photo and that's what it is. Um, but I think this is great, this looks good. Do, do, do. I just try to shoot as low as possible on my Fuji. A thousand is my limit. Yeah, I'll I'll go to two thousand, but that's in like like a case like this photo, this next one. I would probably be at two thousand at that point. Let's see. This is a Canon EOS eighty Ronaldo. Does he have more photos? He does. There's a couple in there. Let's look at this first one. So something like this. Hey, Joe up, welcome to the stream. I would automatically hit it off with that auto ISO. Cause auto ISO usually will get you in a decent spot. 
Then we'll throw that natural fills on it and make sure it's for Canon. Turn up that exposure, drop that magenta. Yeah. Maybe suck the yellows out of it. Yep, that works on this one. So this photo, personally, again, I feel like would be better as a black and white. And that's not even because the white balance is all over the place. I don't know, it just has a really black and white feel to it, like it wants to be black and white. Let me drop that orange a bit. But yet again, you don't want them to look like zombies. <laughs> I'm at the 5,000 range in low light because I want to drop my shutter too much. Yeah, and you know, that's where you have to give and take. Um, I think, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I have some photos. Let's see, 2019 weddings. Um, I don't think I have any, I can't remember that. I did so many weddings last year. There was a wedding I did where we did some pretty dark night shots. Um, and I just kinda, I dropped it low cause I kinda had to, but you know, yet again, I, I also try not to have my shutter too low. So yeah, I'm gonna black and white this one. those highlights down a bit but yeah I like this better as a black and white photo than a color shot but you know what let's let's go back let's so we can at least compare I should have did that in the first place yeah that magenta is hitting kind of hard that's probably where we want it let's make a virtual copy and we'll black and white that So there's the black and white version. Let's keep moving on. This is Ronaldo again, looking like I'm assuming the same camera. Let's see. Yep, ADD. So here's our natural fields and make sure the adjustments are for Canon. And this photo is pretty much where it needs to be. If anything, I want to come up on the oranges in the HSL just a little bit and maybe warm it up a tad. Because, yeah, it was looking a little blue. And so, obviously, with differing skin tones, you want to be careful about your exposure and where you are. You don't want to underexpose too much in camera. You don't want to overexpose too much. And you also, when you're editing, don't want to bring the exposure up too high. Um, obviously, your lighter or your white skin is going to get blown out and look horrible. And your darker skins or your brown skins will also start looking pretty bad if you like have the exposure all over the place. So this works. This is like a good medium, I feel like. I feel like their skin tones look pretty natural. Um, I tend to shoot mixed race couples more often. So this is a normal situation for me. This is what I'm dealing with all the time. You just said make sure the adjustments are for Canon. Oh yeah, that's just in the um, the profile down here, the lens correction. And so the natural fills preset, like this package that you all get, this stuff is already set up, but I'm just going down here and going to auto. And then because it knows what Canon is, it's setting the lens profile for the Canon cameras. Um, the presets I'm using here are the natural fills preset, but this is before I packaged it and it's set up just for me. So the corrections are for Fuji only and I have to just go in and change that. So that's all you're seeing. It's under the lens correction section. So this is the great shot. They're looking lovingly at each other. Yet again, like I was saying about the exposure, if anything, yeah. Pull up the shadows and bring down the exposure some. Let's go on to the next one. Ooh, look at this, look at this moody, this moody piece. I love too how when I ask for submissions, 
everyone gives me like varying scenarios to be like, let's see what the natural fills preset really can do. I, I like that a lot. So um, this probably should be black and white, but we're gonna color it first. So here's a photo where you don't wanna suck the yellow out of it. Obviously because you'll lose like the whole mood. I'm gonna keep the, keep the shadows down fairly low and just use the exposure and the highlights to kind of light it up. And honestly, I feel like I want it like this, kind of dark and moody like that. Um, when I have photos that are mainly objects, I like to bring my clarity up a bit too. So here's kind of the before and after that. Very desaturated, old kind of looking. Um, and I could adjust those yellows if I wanted to. They are looking kind of sad just for this particular photo. This would look dope as a black and white though. Yeah, let's just black and white this one. You know what? No, I'm, I'm not going to black and white it. <laughs> All right. So let's take a quick look at Ronaldo's photos. Here's what he submitted. Looking good. This was definitely a challenging photo. Um, but yet again, not even because of white balance. Halfway because of white balance. But I do think it looks better in black and white. Um, I love this shot right here. This is a great shot. And this looks like something you'd see, like, I don't know, at, at a church or something. I don't know. I love this photo. Um, and with the preset on it, it gives it kind of an old look, which is kind of cool. Here we go again one more time. I hope I'm not posting it too much. But y'all, anyone new to the stream, don't forget about this Natural Fills preset giveaway. So here we are, photo from... Roshane Patrick, which I I'm not sure if they were in the stream or not, but this is with the good old EOS 5D Mark III. So let's throw that on there. And it's a little green, so let's add some magenta in there. And I'm gonna crop in just a tad. Um, this angle is a little weird for me, but there's not much, but yeah, straighten it up a little bit. And I think, yeah, let's warm it up just, just a little bit. We don't wanna suck the yellow out of this one too much because our hat is yellow. Ah, Roshane is in here, what's up, man? This is a great shot. Yet again, it was good in camera. So you're getting some minimal changes here. That yellow is kind of brought back some. So for anyone looking to use the natural fills preset or you have it and maybe like there's colors you don't like, because remember you can adjust this preset and then resave it for yourself as like your version of it. And that's totally fine. So if you want it to, either you can change the hue of the yellow which I am not gonna do. The hue is about on, it's the saturations is different. So you can saturate it more. So you see how I brought that saturation back into the yellow and it looks a little bit better now. Or like I said, you can change the hue a little bit. But I think the hue was on. The saturation was where it was lacking. Much love, these photos and your editing style are amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Also don't forget these photos are from viewers. So a lot of the viewers are here in the chat. So give them some shout out, some love for their photos. I'm just putting the preset on it and that's it. <laughs> yeah, if anything, we'll add that yellow back in there to keep her hat. Or you know what you could do if you wanna suck the yellow out of the photo to keep those whites very white. And then you could get your brush adjustment. And you can use, I think there's one yet for color. And we're just gonna brush on her hat. Uh, 
no 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 where is it uh oh did I play myself I thought you could do the brush adjustment with HSL but you know what I may have lied to y'all yep I think I lied to you no oh, here we go color there there so we brought that yellow back a little bit honestly though I would just do it in the saturation of the HSO and call it a day if you had an issue I actually did use your preset to edit it <laughs> your presets off thank you so much let's go back to fit so here's this photo you saw we kept the yellows a little bit better than naturally how it was who do we have next here's Taylor Williams and it looks like we have one photo from them ARW is a Sony camera. Yep. A7R3. So here's our color and our lens adjustments. Um, I think it's too magenta. No, it's good. Yeah, I think that's about good. Yo, Sony, Sony and my preset love each other. They love each other so much. Like, I didn't realize it worked so well on the Sony stuff until y'all submitted photos, and I'm over here like, maybe I'll switch to Sony. <laughs> nah, I can't leave my Fuji. I can't leave my Fuji, love. Yep, so there's that Sony. Pretty straightforward. That's good stuff. All right. This is Tom Rupp. And I don't know if these folks are in the stream, but this was with a A7 III again. So these should be some pretty easy edits. And it looks like the rest of the photos, yep, the rest of the photos are from Tom himself. Oh, Tay, you were in here. Awesome. I'm glad you got to catch it. Yeah, this is a great photo. Look at that love and passion. <laughs> but yeah, there's that edit again. And as you saw, I didn't do much. It looks like the preset really leans towards Sony photos, which I did not personally know. So here's another backlit situation that we were talking about before. So let's throw our preset on there. We're gonna pull up the exposure. This will be good to see because there's a there's a fair amount of stuff I'll need to do to this photo, I think. Pull the shadows just a little bit, but you see like, I don't wanna lose the shadows in the whole photo. So we're gonna leave them here. Now, okay, there's a couple of things I could do. Um, I don't wanna warm this photo up too much because I like the kind of blueness of the snow so i did warm it up a little bit but i want to kind of keep it where it is and here we go we're gonna brush adjustment again on them and we're gonna do shadow save plus and again i'm gonna do plus because i want to i want it to be extra like i want to really see the difference and then see if it's too much or not since they're so backlit so we're gonna paint that on them real quick and if you press o you can see the outline like that. If you hold alt, you can erase sections. So like, it doesn't need to be perfectly inside the lines, but you don't wanna be outside of the lines too much because then when you're making your adjustments, it's kind of obvious. But either way, your adjustments shouldn't be so drastic that like, it looks like an outline on the person and it's like, that obviously was an edit.
So we're just gonna paint this in real quick. I don't need to hit that back section of her dress because it's very translucent, so the light's kind of coming through it. Awesome, so now I can see where I put the adjustments. I'll hit O again to get rid of that. You can already see like they're standing out more, but it's a little too much. So I'm gonna bring the shadows down a bit. I'm gonna expose them like once or twice, because if you do it too much, it's like, look like it's obvious. We don't wanna do that, so. Let's just put like, yeah, just one. Yeah, keep the shadows up a little bit. Actually, I don't know if I like that extra exposure. I'll keep it on there. Just one. Um, I also wanna warm them up a little more than the photo itself. Yet again, to keep their skin tones. But we don't wanna do it too much and make them stand out and look unnatural. So now that I've done that, I can play around with my global exposure and shadows. And yet again, they are already shadow saved more than everything else. <sighs> the exposure on them is not, it's too much. It's like, it's just a little too much. There we go, here it is, cool. So here's Tom's first photo. Here's the straight out of camera. Backlit versus the actual edit itself. And when you do those paint adjustments, you really, you really have to be delicate with it because you don't want it to look too out of place. And even, even this is like, a tiny bit borderline in my opinion. Let's hit the rest of Tom's photos. And yeah, these are all gonna be Sony. This looks like the same couple again. So bring the exposure down a little bit, bring the shadows up a tad. Looks like we need magenta just a little bit. Bro, you forgot to mention your desktop monitor in the description. Oh, this is um the bin. Do I really not have a link to the monitors? These are the BenQ PD, PDQ 3200 or something. I think it's PDQ. PDQ. BenQ. PD 3200? Q. Yeah, it's like $500. It looks like they dropped the price. They're like 400 bucks. They're 32 inches. They're 100% sRGB. They're great and great. Um, I'm gonna add some orange in the HSL. <laughs> Just a little bit. I don't wanna warm up the scene. I like how cool it looks because it's like winter time and stuff, but I still want them to look kind of natural so here's the before and after that so really oh look at that dynamic range y'all i thought this was blown out um but yeah i pulled the exposure down this time because this was exposed mainly for them not for the background but yet again because not fuji <laughs> because sony has such good dynamic range like all of this stuff in the back was saved and you get this nice little light leak flare kind of coming through here so that's cute yeah i like this this is nice again with the sony let's straighten this up oh you know what did i even i didn't there that's the finished version thanks for knowing it benq yeah the benq monitors are nice and they're made for designers and stuff <laughs> don't go get a sony <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna warm this up a little bit. Add some magenta, pull back the oranges and the HSL. Actually, I don't like the magenta in there. And then get the camera settings there. 
Um, I'm gonna crop it and put them in that nice little third there. I was using your preset on my desk setup photos for Instagram and love it how it looks awesome. Check it out. Check it out. I'm gonna jump in there in a moment. Actually, do I have Instagram on my? I saw I hate on Max. You don't have Instagram as an app, but then like on PC, you're just kind of like, yeah, Instagram. There it is, Instagram for everyone to use. Here's the boy Michael Evans. I'm moving from Canon to Fuji XT3. Yeah. Oh yeah. So these are all natural fills preset. These look dope. Oh look, our desk setup is almost the same. You got one of these felt, nice felt kind of. Yeah, that's dope. Good stuff. So this photo is pretty much done from Tom here. And yet again, if it's good in camera, you shouldn't see too much of a change. The only thing I'm half and half on is the magenta, which I pulled it back a little bit. So you can kind of see it's like more green in the edited photo. And last but not least, a funny photo. Funny engagement, which these are always the fun photos. You just, you gotta give your couples stuff like this. Um, let's straighten this up. Bring some magenta back in. Oh, not too much though. Shadows up a little bit because she's backlit. Turn it up, warm it up. And this is probably where I would leave it. Um, I'm gonna make a black and white of this one though. Create virtual copy. Black and white. So let's bring the highlights down a little bit. Bring the shadows up again. Yeah, I like this better as a black and white. So here goes Tom Roop in his photos. Good stuff. I loved all these submissions, y'all. Thanks for sending over photos for me to edit um, so that you all could see your own photos being edited, but also so that you can get a look at other people's photos and just how the Natural Fields preset looks and how other people can get an idea of how the preset works. I hope this gave you all a great idea of how the preset works on people's photos. Um, let's just, let's pull up some photos while we're, we're waiting. Red is, for, is probably my nemesis. Red is a weird color. Red is definitely a weird color. I'm gonna get some of these portrait photos. I like pulling up a bunch of portrait photos. Do 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 Boom, 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 bam. Look at y'all. Look at y'all in here. This is the natural feels preset. And look, this is across different cameras. And like it's looking pretty on point. And that's another thing I love about the preset. It's like when I have a second shooter who shoots something different than me. Like, for the most part, my preset is going to keep the stuff looking fairly the same. Like, in this one, maybe pull out some of the yellows a little bit, but it's also, like, a sunset kind of scene. So, you know, like, match your colors as much as you can, but natural presets is pretty good across the board. Like, I have not seen it not work on certain cameras, so that's a quick look for everybody here. I hope you enjoyed it, and we're going to go ahead and get into this giveaway. I know that's the... The moment you've all been waiting for is like, I want a free copy. I want a free copy. Everyone's following, get those Insta follows with each other. So let me go ahead and jump in here. Let's do this giveaway. But yeah, thanks again for submitting. And I saw the question, will you ever do this again? Probably. 
Um, I live stream fairly often and I'd love to get back on here again and edit some more photos. I've actually, I did it before in the past as an actual video. This is my first time doing it as a live stream. Um, so yeah, maybe in the future we'll do another one of these. Have some more submitted photos. Um, I'm thinking about maybe making some more presets. Um, but so the natural fills presets really came from me looking for my own stuff to edit my own stuff. Where if I make more presets for different looks, that might take me longer. Because personally, some of the looks I don't like. And that's just, you know, everyone has their own look and that's fine. So we'll see if that happens or not. Oh, Tom was up in here. Oh, what's up, Tom? I love those shots. Yeah, well, yeah, y'all can throw your throw your Instagrams on there if you want to. Um, let's do this giveaway. Let's do this giveaway. All right. 52 entries, 118 minutes left. Oh, I was almost exactly on time. Look at me. <laughs> All right. So I'm about to I'm about to pull the trigger. Let's get some winners. I'm gonna do three giveaways. So if you're in the chat, let me know. Um, if not, I'm gonna be emailing you all. And if I don't hear from you in 24 hours, then you won't get a copy of the preset and I'll just draw someone else. Draw winners. Three winners. Uh-oh. Is this thing gonna make me upgrade? Upgrade to our pro competitions plan or above to draw winners from entries. What? I don't, I don't know what this thing's saying. Let's draw. All right, so we have Esther. I guess that's how you say it, I'm not sure. I don't know if you're in here. That's our first winner. And then next up was Skander. And Michael Mi Mikhail, I can't say it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Those are our winners. If y'all are in the chat at all, let me know. And if not, I'll be emailing you all ASAP to see if I can uh, get you that information and get you that preset. But remember, I have to hear back from people. Like if I don't hear back from you, then Someone else is going to get it. Uh, I'm also, I'm going to throw a discount to everyone who signed up for the giveaway. So keep a look on your emails. I'll shoot out an email to everyone with a discount code for the preset that y'all can grab at a discounted rate as well. Because I appreciate y'all hanging out here. And I appreciate you buying the preset. I hope it's working out for you all to get great results like you're seeing here with your own photos. Congrats to the winners. Yay. I know, I'm sorry, y'all. I wish I could give it away to everybody, but. <laughs> All right, folks. I think that's about it. I'm going to close it out and go hang out with the family and do some actual work that I got to do. Um, luckily enough, I'm still getting wedding inquiries, which is really good because all my weddings just got postponed, no cancellations. Things are still going well, and we still got the YouTube channel going, so keep an eye out for some more videos. We're going to be doing a lot more with this buddy right here, good old iPad. Definitely going to have some videos on this, and we're going to do full editing workflows on this, and maybe I'll live stream some iPad stuff too, but for the most part, stick around on the channel for more of that tech stuff and more hanging out with me since we all just have a lot of time to kill at the moment, um, and yeah, I'll hit you all up next time. Thank you for hanging out. All right. Peace.